Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to another video. The last video that we'll do before the election. Oh boy. So for today's video, guys, I wanted to do something a little bit different, something that I rarely talk about here on the channel, and that is, of course, ETFs. Because I was actually talking to somebody from church today, and she was very concerned about how her finances were going to be and i instructed her a little bit of like hey maybe you know this is something that you might consider doing so we got into a topic about that and i showed her that based off of how much she were to invest she could actually get you know a pretty good income through certain etfs because she doesn't really want to buy into specific companies out of fear that the companies may actually go bankrupt so we're going to take a look at guys three etfs and the metric that we're going to be using to measure how much to invest is actually going to be based on the median rent prices which i'm going to show you guys the number to that in just one second and we're going to be taking a look at the three etfs taking a look at their overall performance throughout the past year as well as year to date and we'll also take a look at the holdings and then finally how much in dividends they pay the quarterly amount as well as how much you would need to invest based on that current yield to get the median rent price in the united states so before we get started make sure to like subscribe comment it really does help with the algorithm on youtube as well as well make sure to follow us in the xfl investing and if you want to join us on discord the link is in the description below so with that said let's get started with this video so let's actually see how much money we want from these investments. As I said, I want to take a look at the median cost of rents in the United States. And this is as ChatGPT, and they basically told me $1,714. I did the same thing for the mortgage, but I figured let's only do it for the rent since it's a little bit cheaper than the mortgage. And the sites that ChatGPT used was Redfin, Zumper, and then uh, pretty much looking through Bing. So I have a feeling that this is pretty accurate. And before we actually head over into the ETFs, let me remind everybody that when it comes to ETFs, it's a completely different thing as opposed to companies and the taxes in regards to the dividends from the ETFs are a little bit weird. So please do your own due diligence when it comes to this. I'm not going to go over the taxation of these dividends for each ETF, but I would just assume that they are taxed at the normal income, okay? Normal active working income, not the qualified dividends that we get from companies like Apple, Chevron, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So let's get started, guys, with the first ETF, and that is SPHD, an ETF that I had originally back in the day. I no longer do, but let's take a look at this ETF. Now, over the past one year, this thing is up 29, as you guys can see, 29.71%. Year to date, it is up 16.84%. Now, this ETF specifically, it is the S&P 500 and it tracks high dividend yield, low volatility. So the companies that it holds are high dividend yield with also low volatility. If we take a look at the top holdings, we can see that it is pretty much evenly equaled out within like the top uh, one, two, three, four, five different sectors, utilities, consumer defensives, healthcare, real estate, and energy. Now, if we take a look at the top holdings, top 10 holdings, we can see that the number one's actually Altria Group, which is a smoking company. Bristol Myers Squibb coming in second, AT&T, Verizon, Kinder Morgan, Class P, Crown Castle, Dominion Energy, Vici Properties, Philip Morris, which is another smoking company, and Simon Property Group. So you guys can see that in the top holdings, it actually has one, two, three real estate companies. So right then and there, you can pretty much just guess that when it comes to the taxes on this one, it's not going to be kind to you, which is why I said, take it as normal active income. Now, there is something else that we have to take a look at, and that is the expense ratio. Basically, the cost for owning this ETF. And we can see that the SPHD expense ratio, it is 0.3%. So, what does this mean? Guys, it basically means that at the end of every year, you would have to pay 0.3% to just have this ETF in your portfolio. And just in case if you're wondering whether or not this is a lot, well, I asked ChatGPT because honestly, this is just a whole lot easier to do. Basically, I asked ChatGPT, if you invest $1,000 into an ex into an ETF with an expense ratio of 0.3, how much would this cost you? And it basically tells me that you would pay $3 per year with $1,000 invested. So for every $1,000 you invest, you would pay $3 at the end of every single year, which is actually not a lot in retrospect. So this expense ratio is actually really low. 
And now when taking a look at the dividend, we can see that the current yield for SPHD, it is 3.44% as if I'm recording this on November 3rd, 2024. Annual payout is $1.07. Five-year CAGR though of negative 0.7 which when it comes to etfs this is not something that i look into too much because this fluctuates based on the holdings that it has if they cut dividends if they increase etc etc et so this is not something that i'm actually worried about two consecutive years of dividend growth and we can see that the ex-dividend date pass as of october 21st now a lot of people like to chase ex-dividend dates i don't i like to chase yield and value so just keep that in mind and 3.44%, it's a pretty good high yield for my personal opinion. And they do pay their dividends monthly, which is really good if you want that monthly passive income. Now, let's actually take a look at this math because we want this ETF to pay us $1,714 every single month in order to cover the rent or the medium rent, right? So let's do that math. Let's do $1,714 and this is monthly. So let's multiply this by 12 to get the yearly, which is $20,568. Now you could go through the amount of shares in order to figure out how much you would need invested for this. However, a much easier way, it's not exact, but it gives you the ballpark measurement is you take this value that you got right here, $20,568, and you divide that dividend yield. So you, you would divide this by 0.0344, it's a decimal, and then this will give you the amount that you would need to have invested into this ETF to make that $1,714 every single month, which is... A pretty big number at five hundred and ninety-seven thousand nine hundred and six dollars, uh, basically six hundred thousand dollars into this ETF to get one thousand seven hundred and fourteen dollars every single month. Now for the second ETF, which is my personal favorite and is the only ETF that I hold, it is SCHD. Of course, I have to mention SCHD. It's a lot of people's favorite right now. So we can see that on the one year, this is up twenty-three point seven percent on the year to date. 10.73%. Not only that, guys, they did recently have a stock split when it comes to this ETF as well. In fact, they had this split. It was a three for one split on September 30th, basically dividing the share price by three, but multiplying everybody's shares by three. If we take a look at the holdings for this company, we can see that this is very evenly split between financials, healthcare, consumer defensives, energy, industrials, consumer cyclicals, technology. Wow. So only communications basic material and utilities are really really low when it comes to the overall exposure in this etf and the top 10 holdings are bristol Myers squib once again and a lot of people are gonna like this one but blackrock we got cisco home depot chevron avi verizon pfizer texas instruments and united parcel services ups so those are the top holdings that's the top um 10 holdings for this one and we can see that they're really isn't much of any REITs when it comes into this ETF. When taking a look at the expense ratio, it's actually even better than that of SPHD because the expense ratio for this one, it is 0.06%. Um, yeah, really, really small. So basically, if we do the math one more time, if for 0.3% was $3, for SPHD, for every thousand dollars you invest, 0.06% is 60 cents per year, guys. 60 cents per year. A lot of people don't like buying ETFs because of the expense ratio. It's 60 cents per year per every thousand dollars you invest. Yeah. Um, the dividend one, you know, one time dividend payment essentially pays for this. So, and then some. So, yeah, not really something to worry about. And now when it comes to the dividend, we can see that the dividend yield, it is nearly 3.5%, 3.48 to be exact, payout of $0.98 cents per year, a five-year CAGR of 12%, with 12 consecutive years of dividend payment. Ex-dividend date passed as of September 25th, payout date was September 30th, and they pay their dividends quarterly. So not monthly, but quarterly. So now let us do the exact same math that we just did for SPHC to figure out how much we would need invested into this ETF to get $1,714, which seeing that the yield's roughly the same, it's going to be very, very close. So if we do $1,714, we multiply that by 12, we get $20,568, and then we divide this by 0 0.034. 
four eight we get roughly around the same right five hundred and ninety one thousand dollars was the other one was five hundred and ninety six thousand so yeah it's pretty much in line just be, it's a little bit lower due to the yield being a little bit higher so there you guys have it five hundred and ninety one thousand dollars to get one thousand seven hundred and fourteen dollars every single month in this etf even though it pays quarterly understand that this quarterly payment will essentially be five thousand one hundred and forty two dollars you divide this by three then you get your monthly so yeah ju just because you're not getting it separated every single month and you're only getting it once per quarter it still gets divided equally amongst the quarter and lastly we got a lot of people's favorite right here we got the etf jepq oh boy this is gonna be an interesting one so we got on the one year this thing being up 17.94 percent on the year to date 9.03 percent when looking at the top holdings, you guys can see that this is very, very heavily weighted towards technology, making up 50.29% in the ETF, followed by communications, then consumer cyclicals, healthcare, consumer defensives, industrials, utilities, basic materials, financials, energy, and real estate, which makes up 0.25% of the ETF. And we're looking at the top 10 holdings. We can see that they comprise of Apple, Nvidia, Microsoft, Meta, Amazon, Alphabet, and Class C, Broadcom, Tesla, Netflix, and NDX3. So yeah, this top 10 really comprises of the top tech companies, even though Amazon and Meta aren't technically tech, a lot of people see them as tech, but in reality, they're really not. And when it comes to the expense ratio, well, man, this is actually really easy to do the math in because the expense ratio for this one's 0.35%, which ends up being around $3.50 based off of what we just saw with SPHD, right? 0 0.3, 0 0.35, 0 0.3 is $3, then 0.35 is $3.50. And lastly, let's take a look at this dividend because this is where people really like this ETF. We can see that, um, yeah, the dividend yield is a whopping 9.72%. Now, this would normally bring out a bunch of red flags. However, ETFs are a little bit different. So, not a company, ETF, it's a little bit different. You would have to take it. It's a completely different kind of metric that you would um, analyze it with. But 9.72%, guys, it's absolutely massive. Paying off $5.29 every single year in dividends. One year of consecutive growth when it comes to this dividend. Ex-dividend date passed as of, no, three days ago, yeah, November 1st. Payout date was, and by the day, oh, wow, November 5th. So, when, when the election is happening, whew. And they pay their dividends monthly. Very, very interesting. Now, taking a look at this math, see how much we need to invest to get $1,714. Let's do this. So I already multiplied this by 12. We got this. And then if we divide this by 0.0972%, we get $211,000. Basically, $211,604.94. So that's a pretty big drop right from 500 nearly six hundred thousand dollars to now two hundred eleven thousand dollars now the thing with this is that this kind of etf a 9.72 well it does look enticing it's um let me just say that it could be cut companies cut these dividends if things get difficult so please be very wary to get into a dividend trap just because it has a big yield all right do not just buy into company slash etfs just because they have a high dividend yield so guys that's pretty much all i wanted to show everybody when it comes to this video you know it's it's something that i really don't cover here a lot i cover once in a blue moon but it's still something that we should talk about because etfs play a big big role when it comes to investing and a lot of people prefer etfs because they're a lot less riskier because they are less riskier than individual companies. So that pretty much does it for this video. Really make sure to like, subscribe, comment. Really does help you on YouTube as well. So make sure to follow us on X at Fatal Investing. If you'd like to join us on Discord, which is the best place to get these videos, live streams, and shorts, the link is in the description below. Now, tell me what ETFs you guys like. Do you agree with my three that I chose? Which ones do you hold? How much money, if you're willing to share, how much money do they give you on a quarterly basis or monthly basis? And what is your overall goal? So thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out. And we'll see you all next time.